Welcome everybody to the Metasploit Sprint demo meeting for June 27th, 2017, summertime. Good and stuff boys, going on. Here in Austin, <laughs> well, this rain recently has been nice, but yes, it is. It's been kicking. It's got a lot of stuff to talk about today. So let's talk about the pull requests. Um, the reset zoom button's hiding a little bump behind it there, obviously, but uh, yeah, we've we've seen some pressure uh, uh, upwards of, of pull requests coming in, which is great. That's that's a good thing. Lots of uh, new features and, and fixes. This goes this particular graph just goes back to the beginning of this year, um, and we've been trying to apply some some pressure downwards by um, going through the queue and and ver verifying and yeah, keep landing those stuff. landing. You know, man, that's, uh, they don't land themselves, uh, which is probably good. Um, so that's that we've got that there. The scoreboard for those anybody keeping score at home uh, for the top committers of last month. Thank you everybody for your help making Metasploit awesome. Google Summer Code. We're about a month in now, right? Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. The, the first evaluation phase, and everyone's doing a really good job. Um, I think we had uh, 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 Google uh, Metasploit level three um, student got his first uh, commit in, um, which is pretty pretty awesome. Um, I think. Uh, from a, a Metasploit point of view, we've gotten three PRs in, um, basically improved the uh, the, uh, the ARM, the x86, and the x86-64 uh, Linux stagers, so they no longer crash when they can't talk to Metasploit, uh, which is really nice from an operational uh, uh, quietness point of view. Um, so Absolutely. Yeah. So it's been going really well. Um, we've got a Slack channel and just chatting away and having a lot of fun. Nice. Google Summer Code is awesome. Cool. And we had a hackathon, Metasploit hackathon. Right, you want to talk to us a little bit about that, or Egypt? Anybody want to? Yeah. Um, so, uh, for Metasploit Hackathon, we basically uh, this this last weekend we we kind of did, did an experiment. We invited a, a few contributors from uh, from from the community and uh, brought them here to Austin, and we had basically everyone sitting around and uh, hacking on code for the weekend. Um, so, if you saw some interesting, cool PRs come in, uh, that was a lot of that was kind of the fruit of that 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 hacking that we did. Nice. Um, uh, this is actually just kind of a partial list of the projects that we worked on this weekend. Uh, we basically everyone just kind of brought their own projects and um, had an opportunity to, to talk with everybody and get sort of an idea of like how it's built into the overall system. We talked a lot about some some bigger picture stuff as well, but um, just kind of just as, as sort of a rundown, um, we we had a, a plugin that uh, Brandon Prey put together that that allows Metasploit to interact with the Iraqi web scanner, um, which is which is pretty cool. It, it can do a few more things than the built-in Metasploit web scanner can. Um, uh, we had someone work on a Mimi Penguin support, which is pretty cool because it can actually steal credentials out of a Linux box in the same way that um, uh, you can do um, with Mimi Cats on a Windows box. Um, so um, hopefully we'll see a PR for that, that at some point soon um, that will um, you know, really enhance our, our post-exploitation capabilities on Linux. Um, a lot of other really cool kind of fundamental stuff that we've been working on for a long time, Sox5 proxy support. Hopefully we'll be able to show a demo of that um, at some point in the future. Um, UDP session support, which I think a lot of people have been looking forward to for, for a while um, as, as kind of in addition to our TCP and um, HTTP support. Um, something that's kind of cool and, and, and uh, Unfortunately, uh, OJ wasn't able to make it to to the to the hackathon, but uh, he he's been working really hard on this uh, this concept of crypto TLV support. Um, and in fact, that the PR just uh, went to the the queue today. You can check it out. But the idea here is that um, we're going to be switching from having Open SSL as our main like crypto library for doing um, uh, TCP encryption. Instead, we're moving to the point where every Metasploit packet or every interpreter packet is encrypted on its own, and that will also allow us to uh, do encryption over DNS, do it over ICMP, do it over all kinds of different protocols, and they'll basically um, uh, add an extra level, level of security to everything we do. And the other cool thing is that that PR um, reduced the size of interpreters, um, base, uh, base loader um, from 1.2 megabytes to 200 kilobytes. Wow. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Um, uh, a lot of other cool stuff that went on. Uh, we, we crashed a bunch of Cisco switches. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 thanks, thanks a lot to Aaron for, for, for help there. Um, we uh, even Mubix put in uh, an RSS plugin, which is really cool. You can actually set up RSS feed, and every time you get a shell, you get another uh, link in your, your RSS um, uh, feed from your feed reader or your phone or whatever it is. Um, and uh, something else is kind of cool is um, we, we we landed a, a PR from. Um, uh, King Sabri, which uh, has been in the PR queue for over a year. Um, we sat down, um, rewrote it, um, and um, added a bunch of new functionality, and actually we're going to be demoing that shortly, uh, which is it's a pretty neat feature. It basically lets you uh, inject your own DNS entries into like an arbitrary DNS server. Neat. Right on. Um, sounds like a lot of fun. So we'll talk about some things that landed. Uh, we've got some new exploits uh, for easy file sharing, HTTP server, semantic messaging, 
gateway uh, had that had quite a bit of traction online uh, people talking about it um, uh, as far as the vulnerability um, we uh, Brent just showed the DNS update uh, new module um, we had some updates to existing items uh, some things just getting things working with like GitLab to the, the GitLab login as a scanner module to get work with recent versions of GitLab and Jenkins script console uh, is an aux, I think, uh, module that allows you to accept an API token. Um, process, process maker exec is support for other workspaces. And we had we had a, a neat update to Mimikatz, uh, the extension. We, uh, OJ got us up to date with a, a newer version that allows um, change in TLM functionality. So you can change users' passwords or um, hashes on Windows systems. Um, to continue, continuing that, um, Tim had an update that allows uh, somebody to, you can turn on the display of a remote uh, Android device. Uh, it doesn't uh, unlock it or anything, but it does turn the display on. And, um, and then as Brent mentioned, we had some various payload stages that have been updated to, to be more robust. And as always, lots of bug fixes and tweaks. Uh, things in the works. Uh, Brenda talked some about the new protocol agnostic per packet encryption for all interpreters. Uh, so it's, that that's a, that big uh, the PR is up now. Uh, OJ wrote a really nice description. If anybody wants to read a really nice description of, of all the stuff that went in there, it's it's quite verbose. It's very good. Um, the per per session GUID support um, is coming along. Um, it's checked into some of the payloads, but I don't think it's in framework yet. Uh, with some uh, exploits that are in the in the PRQ, uh, you can see there uh, the, the, all the all these happen to be remote code execution exploits. And uh, we have a Turla driver loader wrapper module that allow you to to load unsigned code into a, a, a Windows kernel. And then again, we're still working on bugs and tweaks. Huzzah! Uh, let's talk about what the teams are up to. Somehow I managed to skip. Went over the A team. There we go, the A team. So, Metasploitable 3, more Linux support, more flags, more better. Uh, the payload testing infrastructure, uh, Brendan's been adding some cool stuff to that, knocking that out. Um, I think we've had some Metasploit aggregator work, but I know Jeffrey's been busy on a lot of other stuff lately as well. Um, image diffing, which we'll see like a demo of in a little bit here. Ways nodding his head, awesome. And of course, exploits and modules, the hackathon, uh, landing PRs, uh, you know. There's been, been plenty of stuff going on at the a has been involved with the last couple of weeks. Uh, Xanatos uh, continues uh, pushing forward the Ruby SMB uh, work um, and the audio capture streaming as well, which uh, we'll have a demo of uh, today, yeah. Um, of Project Goliath, our database, new database, uh, you know, goodness going on there. And uh, for Framework Fridays, we'll just try to, try to put, give some focus to issues and PRs that are, have come in. It's demo time. Would you like to go? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Brent Cook. Um, I'm going to be showing you um, a, a cool new module that we just recently added to Metasploit. Um, um, thanks a lot to, to Mubix and King Sabri for their help, um, both in providing the initial proof of concept and for doing a lot of testing. Um, the idea behind this module is it takes advantage of a feature that um, is actually added in a, an RFC, the idea of being able to automatically update a DNS server record without having to hit uh, in a kind of a common unified way. Um, this has actually been in Microsoft's DNS server for a long time, and I think it's actually implemented on other DNS servers as well. Um, what I have here on the left-hand side is a DNS server that's in Windows 2008. It's already set up, um, the latest patch version. Um, and I've got a domain here called monkeychicken.org. I, I did check to see if that was registered in the first place. It's not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into my Metasploit framework directory. And um, I might have been doing a little bit of development in the meantime between demos. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and start the Metasploit framework. You live dangerously. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, I have utter confidence. This is, this is going to work perfectly. You always do, man. Yeah. And 60% of the time, it works all the time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, so the, the name of the module is, um, well, it's definitely not iOS Telnet ROCM, but it um, is uh, use auxiliary um, admin DNS dynamic DNS update. It's really our first aux module, aux admin module for DNS, so really convenient. I'll show you what the options look like right here. Um, so basically, what you do is you target a, a specific DNS server, um, that's what you put in as our host. Um, 
On the DNS server, you can basically inject records. You can either delete records, add records, or you can, we have a special feature called update, which will automatically do just the right thing depending on what's, what's set up in your environment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and target my, um, my Windows 2008 server. So set our host uh, 192.168.56.101, which is where it's gonna be inside of you know, the VM. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my domain to be, to match my uh, target domain, monkey chicken. Dot org, and um, you know, I'm basically going to try to inject an A record for a host called foo. So if I go ahead and run it, um, it'll say I couldn't find a record called foo.monkeychicken.org. I'll go ahead and try to inject a record, and it'll say it's, it's added it. So if I go over here and I hit um, uh, not reload, refresh, you can now see that there's actually a record on the DNS server. Now, why is this useful? Um, you can set all kinds of interesting records on, on, on your remote host. Let's say you want to set WPAD, which allows you to basically inject a proxy for the entire domain that you're targeting. Um, you can say set um, uh, hostname WPAD, run, and voila, I now have WPAD injected into the remote domain. Um, you can also do other interesting stuff, like for instance, if you wanted to insert a, a text record, um, you might want to use this to basically inject like DNS crypt type stuff or, or extra kind of um, mail authentication records and, 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 and extra stuff to add kind of authenticity to the record you inject. Uh, you can do that as well. Um, the way you do that is rather than specifying an IP address to point it to, you'd specify a value. So if I say set type um, uh, txt, uh, set value this. Hi, mom. Um, it'll go ahead and inject that record as well. There you go. So, um, so lots of opportunities here for, for doing interesting stuff. You can also delete records, um, set um, action. Uh, you can delete. If I want to cover my tracks, I can run that as well. And I should be able to refresh and uh, show that this is gone. Oh. oh. There you go, demo gods. Uh, <laughs> it works for all the other records. Um, nice. So uh, that's cool stuff. Other, other thing you can do is you can actually spoof the source IP. So if someone is actually blocking where the updates come from based on the source IP, you can spoof it since it's DNS, you, you don't really care about the response, and then the module automatically uh, just uh, soldier on and not really bother verifying. So you can basically do blind injections as well. Nice. That's pretty much it. Very cool. Um, another neat thing is it uses the really awesome um, uh, Ru DNS Ruby library. Um, which supports a lot of really cool stuff like DNS crypt and Kerberos authentication. Uh -huh. And so future future enhancements to the module will add that, and then we'll be able to support what they call secure update modes as well. Um, so there you go. Very cool. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Brent. So how, I, I wonder, how does the DNS manager allow anybody else to blindly change the entries? It's actually a setting on the, on the domain itself. Um, and uh, I forget where it's at. When you create the domain, it actually asks you if you'd like to allow anyone to um, update it. Here it is, dynamic updates. So basically, uh, in 2008, you either get to say non-secure and secure oh, or wow. none. So basically, if you want to allow secure updates, you also have to enable non-secure updates. Yeah, they don't give you an option. Unfortunate. Now, if you use a later version of Windows, they allow you to choose between secure or non-secure. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, this version made you say both. Okay. Um, so if anyone's got a 2008 box, um, uh, you're basically vulnerable. probably exposed and vulnerable. Okay. Um, 2012 and later, it looks like um, they, they do a better job. Okay. Very cool. Thanks, Brent. Oop, we see a screen. Cool. So uh, we, uh, Pierce and I added uh, audio streaming channel functionality to Interpreter. Um, in the past, we only had a, uh, the ability to be like, hey, I want um, 10 minutes of audio kind of like recorded on uh, the remote box and then um, send it all when it's done. So uh, what this does is it makes it so you can uh, stream it and listen to it as it's happening in real time. And um, uh, yeah, stream. Um, and so we add, we added it to metal. Uh, so we, we added commands in uh, Metasploit to support all this and uh, uh, channels and stuff. Um, and uh, we added the uh, payload um, functionality to metal and uh, we used um, AV foundation which is um, should be on all OSX um, 
iOS devices, so it's pretty lightweight. Um, and uh, we used string pool interpreter channels. Um, and so, so I hope it works here. Dude, confidence, come on, confidence. Okay. Well, we'll see. So this is strictly OS X? Right. Yeah. In theory, it should work with it, iOS native. Yeah. This I mean, is, not, not Windows. No. So this is this is this this went into we focused on metal for this exercise. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so and then we discovered like a bunch of the typical frameworks you use for Linux capture are GPL. So we're going to spin that a different way going forward. But yeah. So this this one right now is is OS X focused. Um, but we'll be adding support for other interpreters as we go. And so uh, we put in like I put in this arbitrary delay for when to start it, but I made it an option so you can like start it whenever you want. Um, you know, like if you wanted to like delay like maybe like a couple seconds more, um, uh, because we only used YouTube and stuff. Uh, uh, so yeah, so Dev has his audio turned on just a little bit because the more you turn it on, it creates this like cycle of of looping because it's recording what I'm saying right now and playing it back about one second behind and it just gets really unintelligible real quickly and because you, you can hear over there it's starting to sound kind of garbled. So so that's 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 why we're showing that's why Dev's showing the the the, the, the visual because typically the microphone wouldn't be in the same room with you; it'd be somewhere else, right? So you wouldn't. So the we, idea we're kinda, is you get to listen in on someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with, with you know, in, in situations where it's legal, no, it's, you know, whatever the disclaimer should be. Yeah, yeah. But the, the benefit here, one of the benefits here, is that this gives you ability to, to listen to it real time as it's happening, um, as opposed to to saying record this many, much minutes of audio, download it, and listen to it after the fact. Um, so this right, this right now is actually writing a wave file, correct, on your hard drive. So you you have a, a, a record of what happened. Uh, going forward, um, support for other OS's, um, audio compression. There's a couple things of that nature that, that are on the roadmap I need to add in, right? So. It's also very yeah, cool. yeah. So expect expect this this will be this is all all PR in branch or in branches right now should be landed this week. So. Yeah. That'd be it. Thank you, Dev.